we're going to celebrate, and Bill's going to join us to talk about and honor astronomer Carolyn Shoemaker, who recently passed away. Um, I was lucky enough to meet her at the very first conference I ever went to. Well, I was in, right out of undergraduate before I went to graduate school. I was at um, Lowell Observatory, and first conference I ever well, I worked at it. I got to pour drinks and run slide projectors and things like that. Yeah, there were slide projectors then. But it was comets, asteroids, and meteors. And um, she was there, and I got to meet her, and I was, I thought it was pretty great. I was a little starstruck to meet the shoemakers. But uh, Bill, you know, why, why are we celebrating Carolyn Shoemaker, and uh, why should folks remember her? And I, I obviously agree we should. Yes, there's so much to uh, to celebrate about this this human being. I the more I researched her, the the more I regretted that I didn't have your opportunity to, to actually meet her and speak with her. Um, this is a, a woman who, as a child, had zero interest in science. This is she admits this herself, admitted this herself. Um, she did end up uh, getting a couple of master's degrees in in history and political science. Um, she married a scientist, a geologist, uh, Dr. Eugene Shoemaker. Um, she helped him in the field a bit. They had three kids. All the kids went off to college eventually. Now she's 50, 51 year old, uh, one years old and, and has nothing to do. And her husband uh, at the time was working, uh, I believe in a program at Caltech that uh, was searching for asteroids. They were looking for, for potentially hazardous objects. And um, he hired her in as a research assistant, even though she had zero um, background in, in physical sciences. And it turned out she had a real talent for this. Uh, they would use the uh, um, uh, this um, what was it, eighteen inch, yeah, eighteen inch Schmidt telescope at Palomar Observatory, uh, photograph stuff all night, the sky all night, patches the sky, and then the, she would take the uh, the stereoscopic viewer and look for little tiny movements of anything, a little dot in the sky that moved a little faster than the stars, and that's how you find uh, things like comets and asteroids. She ended up finding. Uh, over 32, let me get that number to be correct here. Um, yeah, over 32 comets and uh, various different sources uh, talk about how many asteroids, but uh, Sky and Telescope says over 800 asteroids she identified. They worked together, they would photograph all night, he would develop the film. It was, you know, you had to develop the film in those days. Um, but she did the actual looking and she got supposedly really, really good from all sources on this. Okay, so then they have uh, occasionally uh, collaborated with another uh, comet hunter by the name of David Levy. That's why there's so many Shoemaker-Levy uh, um, comets that were discovered. Shoemaker-Levy 9 is the one that's really, really uh, important. In fact, um, and by the way, in this picture here, she's standing in front of that 18-inch Schmidt telescope at uh, Palomar, and her husband took this picture. But you can, I don't know if you can see all the way on the left side of the frame, and this is a composite picture. They shot two different things and put them together, but this is basically what happened. A comet uh, that had been orbiting Jupiter was ripped apart by its tidal forces into, I think, 21 different pieces, flew off into space, and then, of course, Jupiter's immense gravity pulled them back in, and they collided with the atmosphere of uh, Jupiter. They knew this was gonna happen because of their work in, in identifying uh, this, uh, these objects. So it was the first time that we ever got to watch live impacts in our solar system. We knew this was gonna happen, it happened, we got to record it, we got to learn from it. Um, you can see in the, the picture in the middle there, some of the scars that were left in the atmosphere of Jupiter, some of those are Earth-sized, I just wanna say. They're, they're really big scars. If that thing had hit us, we would not be having all space considered tonight. <laughs> Um, so that's, that stuff is all, of course, really, really important. Um, she got all kinds of, of medals and, and awards and things. The James Craig Watson Medal, NASA gave her an Exceptional Scientific Achievement Medal, Rittenhouse Medal, Scientist of the Year, just on and on and on. Not bad for somebody who really had no, had actual disdain for science in her youth uh, and really made some serious, important uh, scientific contributions with her, uh, her brilliant talent for spotting objects in space. I regret that she's gone. Thank you, Bill, for bringing that uh, beautiful summary of, of her work and her life. And indeed, um, you know, the two made a great pair together of researchers, but yeah. honestly, the work she did of going and finding them and having those school, those skills might have been a little harder than the taking of the images. I, I hate to say it. I don't want to disparage yeah, well, it at all. Because again, they were a pair, but 
the, it mm -hmm. really takes skill to see that little dot that's moving in that sea mm -hmm. of stars. That's really hard. We have automated routines that can do it these days, but that's that's the tough part. So she hey, deserves all those honors. Just one last thing. I always look for a little quote from the person, and my favorite quote that she, from her is that uh, somebody asked her, "What does it feel like to discover a new comet?" She said, "I want to dance." I just thought uh, that was fantastic. 